Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It's time for the feedback loop. So good to have you along this Monday morning. Um, we've got a few things here in in the cooker uh, for, for today. Eve is in, Charlie's in, um, two radically different directions. Eve is testing one of her projects. She's actually testing a flow. She's already gone through and done the big product test. So we're gonna be, be helping her out um, with a maze test. Um, this is the first maze test that we've seen because maze recently added Figma as a testing option. And we'll be able to, you'll be able to get a first look at that today. Additionally, um, uh, Charlie's doing some, uh, beginning to, to clean up uh, his cover letter. And um, when you're in the when you're in the job search, cover letters um, they're they're really like an icebreaker. I mean, what what? How else are, is somebody supposed to know who you are um, when you knock on their door and they weren't expecting you? Um, like a cover letter really helps with that. And then finally, I want to take a second. Uh, let's go ahead and share my screen. Let's just get it, let's just get this underway so we can do this. Um, Lunch Club. Lunch Club is a relatively new thing. Lunchclub.ai. Um, I'm not really sure what the AI part is, to be honest with you. Um, I've had a few students bring this up. Matt brought it up in the channel. Luigi mentioned it. So it seems like in this remote COVID world where we can't go to meetups, we need other alternatives. And Lunch Club, I'm guessing somebody, somebody probably had this idea of, hey, how do we do one-on-one -on -one connections? And then like COVID hit and it was like perfect timing. So this is not something I think spun up because of COVID. I think it's, it's, it's something that's riding the COVID wave. Um, anyway, this is, uh, it says curated one-on-one -on -one professional connections. And basically you tell lunch club who you are and each week it connects you with somebody who it thinks you should meet with. Um, it's, it's interesting. I don't, um, I don't quite know what to do with it yet, um, but I definitely, I definitely see, I definitely see this as a new networking, uh, having networking potential. So, um, you know, you might meet somebody like Ian or Natalie or Anastasia, um, and this is backed by Andreessen Horowitz, which, which catches my attention. That's not a that's not a company that just puts money behind random things. So um, I would give this a look. If you're in that networking phase and you no longer have the ability to go to a physical space, COVID, this might be an opportunity um, to continue facilitating those interactions. And, and I gotta be honest with you, I've, I've talked about this before. I really, 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 really like the the efficiency of remote networking who wants to drive anywhere why why would you want to like carry your body to another place where people are covid and then hang out on the side of a wall like like have a one have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation um with somebody who you might benefit from talking to and uh, that's what I like about th uh, this opportunity is it's going to curate that potential uh, connection uh, based on what you're telling it about yourself. If anybody gets in here and does something with uh, Lunch Club, uh, please report back. Let me know how it's working for you because this is something that's, like I said, brand new. And I would love to know more. I, I would love to have, you know, not just my opinion on it. I'd love your opinion on it. So. Check out Lunch Club and then and then hit us back. Um, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna jump in at Charlie first. Eve, Eve's hanging out over here, and we'll talk about why Eve and May's design is over there in the realm of Chrome. You, you all know that I typically use Firefox, um, and I use Firefox mainly for the testing tools. Uh, the 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 in, the Inspect element tools, I believe, are better in Firefox. That's just where that's just where I'm comfortable. Um, do I like it like more as a browser? Eh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. But I like it for testing. All right, back here to Charlie. Um, so when I look at 
when I look at cover letters, the, I, I have Charlie. I've not read this. Okay, I've, I've not read it at all. But there's a structure that I I tend to push to, students toward um, to basically create a flow. One, um, I am always well. I should I should back up. In the past, when I've done hiring, I've always been keenly aware of when somebody is just spamming everybody that's made a job post and when they've actually done the research about where I'm at, who I am, and not only who I am, but what my company does. Um, I've hired, I've done hiring at four different organizations at this point. So I've, I've seen applications come in all shapes and sizes. Um, you don't have to, don't have to kiss anybody's ass. Okay. That's, that's not the point. The point is, are you aware of what we do? Do you know what we do here? This is not a Wendy's, okay? This is a this is a design shop. We do certain things here, and um, that's the first thing I'm looking for in that first paragraph. Like, do you know what we do here? Do you know anything about us? Was that, because I've gotten a lot of I've gotten a lot of cover letters that, that say something along the lines of. I'd be a great fit for your organization. I do a lot of social media posts and uh, I'm a social media, I, I can really drive a lot of traffic. It's like, but I'm looking for a designer who can like design interfaces or I'm looking to hire mentors or like, I'm, I'm not looking for whatever it is that you're selling. Um, you know, so, so that's the first thing. Like I, I wanna know that, I wanna know that you know where you're applying, like right up top. like. Why do you, why do you want to work here? Why do you think this, why is this, a, why is this a place you want to work at? Second thing is now, now that you've identified, like you are aware of what you're applying for. Now, t- now tell me why you're, you're the, the candidate I should, should consider. Like once you, once you told me like, you know, Hey, I think your place is awesome. A little bit of why. Now, tell me how you can make it more awesome, okay? Don't come in telling me that you can make everything awesome because I'm, I'm not convinced that you know where you're applying. Because, and that's not, that, that's not saying anything about you, Charlie. It's saying everything about, and really Charlie, Charlie wrote it, wrote this, but I haven't read it yet. Ch- Charlie is anybody who's applying. I have to put you all in the same bucket because so many people abuse job applications they just like throw them at every they throw the same thing at everybody it's like ninja stars all right so something to keep in mind there tell me why you think this place is awesome and that prove to me you know where you're applying then tell me how and then wrap it up because i i don't have all day to read cover letters like i'm thinking three paragraphs tops okay um so let's turn our attention here uh charlie UX designer, um, bunch of stuff here. Oh, to whom it may concern. Is this a suicide note? I, no, let's, let's not do that one. Um, dear hiring team. Now, like, obviously I would prefer like, uh, Mr. Mrs. Such and such, you know, um, Dear Chad, like whoever it is you're you're applying to, but oftentimes I'll be the first to admit you don't know who you're applying to because they they haven't they haven't indicated who is making the post. Additionally, oftentimes I, I see somebody like share something on LinkedIn or on Twitter, and they're sharing it, but they didn't post it. So addressing them is the wrong idea. So I would go with the generic. Um, uh, dear hiring team uh, or you know dear hiring committee uh, like some something that I something that says hey whoever's hiring for this job I want to talk to them okay to whom it may concern a little bleak to be honest with you so let's get into this first paragraph as someone with a passion for holistic user centered hyphen 
Um, hyphen. And by the way, this is what Grammarly does for you. Like, and this is hyphen. Note taking. Eh, I think note taking is like well, eh, maybe. Um, anyway, as someone with a passion for holistic user-centered design, from concept to implementation, I found the UX designer position working on Valorant very intriguing. I've been playing Valorant uh, through most of the beta and would love to bring my passion for this game to enhance uh, bring my passion for this game to enhance user experience the user experience for its fan for this fantastic tactical shooter. I have been passionate about the about the games industry as a whole or I am I would say I am passionate about the I am passionate like I have been as like in the past I was passionate about this but I'm not anymore. Um, I am passionate about the games industry as a whole and have seen all types of user experiences which will allow me to fluidly integrate integrate fluidly into your growing team. Um, I'm passionate I am passionate about the games industry as a whole and aware of the industry standard regarding user experiences which will allow me so seeing all types I, I um, understand and understand the best practices regarding user experience for the industry like there's something there about have seen all types like a I want to I want to nail down that like hey I like this whole industry I am passionate and I'm aware of what good UX looks like in a gaming environment that's what you're trying to get to there but I think this overall um, does a pretty good job um, does a, it does a pretty good job of identifying um, the fact that you know what they work on okay so overall pretty good couple things hyphen am uh, so I created topspin a cloud-based note-taking application geared to tennis players and coaches from ideation to prototype developing it through the entire design cycle while designing topspin I spent much of my time working on working to perfect my high fidelity mock-up to ensure pixel perfection and ease of use. Put the same attention to detail to work in a redesign of the home screen experience for Pandora. I gained new skills with my redesign of Pandora by studying their current app, their style of consi for, consi for consistency and the ability to use the app while listening to music. I recently have been working uh, for a startup called School Group, designing graphics, images, uh, and assets for use through the company. Um, so that's interesting. Um, I want to take a look at the next paragraph. With that said, I have worked through each state, each of the stages of design on smaller, other smaller projects. I am comfortable with popular UI frameworks, designing for Android, iOS, and Android, and have been, have, and have kept current, and am keeping current. Like, like, there's, there's like a, a tense there. It's something's off there. With uh, design best practices across multiple platforms, I'm way more interested in that second paragraph than uh, the third paragraph than I was in the the second one. Uh, the second one's really specific and without any knowledge of those of those applications um I, like, like I, I want i frankly want something like um i am a by trade i'm a flexible i'm a flexible uh designer interested um with uh, by trade, I'm a flexible designer. Having, uh, um, 
I consider myself to be a flexible designer working through uh, with experience working through uh, working through the entire uh, the entire design process on smaller projects I'm comfortable working um, I'm comfortable working with popular UI frameworks designing in iOS and Android or just, you could just say designing for mobile and have have kept busy or have uh, have kept kept uh, and am current with uh, the, uh, design best practices across multiple platforms uh, I've recently um, and I've recently wrapped up a, I've recently built out my portfolio to display my skills or something like that second paragraph I feel is like just too many little little things um i i don't agree that all and i think part of the problem is um that second paragraph it details for me why you're not a fit for valorant um valorant is a gaming experience you're talking about a note-taking app you're talking about pandora talking about graphics for school group like like none of that sounds like valorant so I'm, I'm immediately thinking hey no but on the on the third paragraph if that was in, in the same place i'd be like oh so this person's this person's more like a uh, a tweener like a ux ui designer comfortable with frameworks designs for mobile um and, cur- and claims to be current on design best practices. Let's take a look. Like, you, you can't let the cover letter rule you out. Okay, let the, your your job, the job of the cover letter, is to say, I know who you are. I think I can help you. Go look at my portfolio. That's that's the job here. So that second paragraph, it, at least in this particular job undercuts that because I'm thinking uh, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like the right it doesn't sound like they're working on the right stuff now they could still make that same determination by going to your portfolio and looking at your portfolio and going eh. or maybe they see something in your portfolio that they like the whole the whole shebang is can I get them to the portfolio all right can I get them to click the link and spend a minute looking at my portfolio I know that does not sound like it should be a hard thing. These people are getting hundreds of applications. Um, DocuSign posted a job looking for a junior designer. They get 800 applications in eight hours. Okay, they're they're going to read through this and they're going to go, no, yes, no, yes. This is going to be the first cut. Okay, for Valorant. This get you cut it's not even bad okay it's just it's just not right for that job okay so keep that in mind um this better than that a little too much detail okay um and it's like i i don't know what these things are um so uh when i became an educator um i learned about designing lessons I learned I learned about designing lessons differentiated for each type of student in my classroom. That's a I'm struggling with that sentence. Um, these efforts led have led me to um, through these efforts I developed a passion for design and user-centered experiences. Like these efforts have led me to a passion in design and user experience. You were sleepy when you wrote that. I was sleepy last night when I wrote something in the uh, in the we- the weekly pragmatic update, and I caught it this morning. And I'm like, you know, there is a difference. There's a definite difference between potential and potentially. You know, and it and it stops you in your tracks when you see it. And sometimes you have to like, you know. These efforts have led me to a passion in design and user. No, we're not doing that. You know, through these efforts, I have developed a passion for design and user-centered experiences. See, it's like, you know, a little turn, a little, a little 
little twist there. Um, in a previous role as an educator, I learned about designing lessons. I learned how to design lessons that accommodated each type of student in my classroom. That effort led me to develop a passion in design for design and user-centered experiences. Like that's the that's the twist, okay? For my efforts, uh, I learned empathy. Um, and attention to detail, which I've combined with my user experience skills to help companies such as yours. Um, like, but, and user centered experiences. This. That work in the classroom taught me empathy and attention to detail, which I've combined, um, which I've been using to help companies like yours. You've, you've already mentioned user experience skills, and like we, we've got a lot of that, okay? Um, if hired, I'll bring that same attention to detail to your company, and the designs I create will be. Um, So if hired, if hired, I'll bring that same de attention to detail to your company with If hired, I'll bring that same attention detail to your company with a passion for solid research that benefits the end user experience. Um, I'm interested in learning more about contributing to the right games and, ex and look forward to speaking with you sincerely. Sure. So like there's, there's a little twists as we go. Okay, Charlie. Um, there's there's a little bit of work up here, uh, minor minor stuff. This I think is a this largely disqualifies you. This I think we can we can if we get rid of this we can extend this out just a bit, and then there's some real work that needs to happen here to help elevate it. I can feel like it it feels to me like this was a real struggle for you to like come up with that end cap okay now what I'll say here is that these you know this paragraph once you get it finished up it won't change much from from one place to the next neither will that okay this will change because you got to change up the company name the real the real paragraph that's going to change a lot is going to be this one okay right off the start because um, with each company you want to be fo focusing your attention on that company like it it does it does you little little to no good to like send this out if, if you're not really focusing on who you're writing this for um but when you think about it i'm i'm basically saying you've got to change out one paragraph per cover letter all right now i think that second paragraph in some places, in some places, this may work fine. Okay, it's not going to work for right games. Right games need something else. You don't necessarily directly have it, so you're going to go with the more vague. Let's talk about skills broadly rather than project specifically. Um, but again, we're trying to get them to take a look at your portfolio. Um, 
too much detail here. I may just determine that eh, not not interested. Okay, um, but tweaks. Long story, very short. You need a paragraph that tells them you understand what they do. You need a paragraph that tells them what you do. Again, you've got two here, and I think the second one is stronger than the first. And then you've got to wrap it up. And I think you did you your idea in the end was good. It was better than the execution. The idea of what you're trying to do is is in the right area. We just need to wordsmith it a bit. Okay. So, uh, Charlie, thanks for submitting that. Now let's head over, take a peek at Eve's maze design exercise. Now, this is something that I want to point out. What I want to point out something. If I take this maze design, I, 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 you know, we've opened up a new screen here in Firefox, and I paste it in. What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. Maze does not work in Firefox. Maze only works in Chrome. First thing, first lesson to know about Maze is if your participant doesn't have Chrome loaded, it ain't gonna work, okay? And that is a very frustrating aspect of Maze, but it's it's been, it's been a long-standing problem. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't like sending out the note because if somebody clicks on the link and they're not aware it just loads up a white screen you're like I, I don't know what happened so be aware of that um, so here she says um, amazing to meet you uh, you'll soon start start um, to complete a series of missions and questions by the way this is a preview so we're, we're previewing the test there's no right or wrong answer just do what comes naturally what follows is a succession of interactive designed pages. The final product might differ. When asked to complete an action, you only have to click or tap. It doesn't respond if it if it's something that doesn't respond if, if something doesn't respond on click, it's not clickable. Okay. So that lays down the gra ground rules. You know kind of how this sets up for the end user. Now we're going to click to get started. It says hi. Thank you for taking time to participate in this te test. You have one mission to accomplish and two questions after that. Take your time to complete it. There are no right or wrong answers. Your feedback is much appreciated. Purchase a regular size three, week, three meals per week plan. Select a regular size three meals per week plan and complete the purchasing process. This includes creating an account. Select the following three meals um, at meals selection. Okay, that piece may be a bit much, but we'll, we'll, let's give it a shot. Okay, so that goes away. Um, click the purple bar if you want to like see the instructions again. That's that's good. All right, so we'll continue. So we are supposed to. Uh, yeah, let's close that. So this is what this is how they would how the user would end up seeing this. Um, we are here meant to select a a regular size three meals per week plan. I see plans up here. So um, regular large regular um, three meals dinner for two for dinner dinner for two or dinner tonight and lunch the next day great for family okay again I want to come back over here regular size three three meals per week plan that would seem to be regular size three meals per week plan okay so now it's taken me to create an account I'll hit continue okay so it's meals this appears to be where I select meals um, let's take a look at mm, panko crusted plank okay there's the plank tacos there's the rice paper summer rolls and 
Okay, so Panko, Blank, Summer Rolls. Okay. Select how you receive your meals. Um, okay, please select how you want to receive your meals to continue. Okay, so I'm going to say um, I would like to carry them out. And, oh, okay, well, that's nice. I guess, I, I guess I've got a few other things here. Uh, choose your date. Okay. Now, looks like I'm I'm gonna select. Okay, I select McAllister Square. I'm I'm Mr. or Mrs. Grover here. Grover. Wasn't Grover a Sesame Street character? Is that the one with the nose? Might have been. Um, we've added a tip. Um, proceed to checkout. Card details. Okay. Billing address. Review order. Okay. Carrying it out June 1st. Oh, pro tip, if you're watching this, I always set this for like some ridiculous date in the future. Like I'm gonna, like it's gonna be, um, you know, it because like the, um, you know, when you're running these tests, it always throws people off, like um, if it's in the past, but if it's in the future, for some reason it works fine if it's in the future. I, I guess I'm gonna pick this up in 2021. Um, but anyway, just something I do. Um, it's a little, little detail. Um, otherwise you kind of have to constantly like update this like August 1st, I guess would be the next one. Uh, place order. Yeah. Got, got everything there. Place order and okay. Well done. You completed the mission. All right. Now I know what Eve was really going after there and you might not. And if you're watching this video, I would love for you to guess. Well, actually, you know, let's complete the mission here because she wants our feedback. Um, which option did you choose when asked? Um, so which option did you choose when when asked for, to select how you receive your meals? I choose uh, curbside. No, I, ch I choose carry out. OK, um, why did you choose that option for receiving your meals? Um, I don't like, no, I don't like to wait at home for deliveries to arrive. Continue. And that's it. And that's the real key kids. Um, I'm, I was going to like make this a, Hey, tell me what you thought she was searching for, but I'll just tell you what she was searching for. She was trying to figure out if people could see multiple options for delivery. She put a lot of emphasis on, on, you know, select these certain dishes and select this meal plan. But what she was really testing for was whether or not people would choose something other than delivery. And as you can see, the whole task was just, was just a mirage until that point. So great job, Eve. I love the fact that you were able to obscure what you were really going after there. It was really well done. Um, I wish Maze worked in more than just Chrome. And that's going to do it, folks. That is it for this edition of the Feedback Loop. I hope you found it beneficial. Uh, Charlie, uh, you know, thanks for submitting that cover letter. Eve, thanks for giving us a, a quick peek into Maze design. And uh, everybody go ch check out uh, Lunch Club. Without further ado, I'm Chris Courtney for the Feedback Loop. Thanks for watching. See ya.